It's time for another Targets in Focus program. I'm Kate Wathel and joining me today is Anders Eckloff, Chief FX Strategist at Swedbank. Hi Anders, thanks for joining me on the line. Firstly, there's still a lot of talk about the SMB's cap on the Swiss franc and speculation surrounding this. So what are your short, mid and long term predictions for the Euro Swiss franc? I think we are quite the lost like consensus when it comes to the Euro Swiss franc. We still believe in the upside and we, we believe that uh, uh, SNB uh, has good credibility when they say they are not going to let go on the on the floor, your Swiss floor at 120. Uh, as we believe that uh, the worst part of the euro crisis is behind us, and, and that markets uh, will focus a little bit away from from safe haven uh, yeah, assets, uh, we think that uh, uh, the Swiss currency will weaken over time. But it's uh, it's a, it's a more like medium to long term projection. Uh, because, I mean, the Swiss franc is, is very, very uh, dear at, at these levels and it will hurt uh, yeah, different types of industries in, in, Swi in Switzerland. And what about your 1, 3 and 12 month predictions for the Euro-Yen? Discussing Euro-Yen is obviously you talk about the risk sentiment on average and uh, uh, our Euro-Yen Euro uh, forecast is uh, we will look for like back, move back to 110. And uh, that's more about that we believe that the U.S. economy will continue to, to perform better than, than uh, Japan and the Eurozone and, and that U.S. yields are, go, are coming up a bit. So we actually have Euro dollar to the lower side. And uh, that implication is that we have Euro yen uh, to a little bit to the, to the higher side here. And uh, uh, we believe that's, the, that's uh, where we are heading for. Uh, Japan uh, will continue to make arguments for, for perhaps more bond buying. And uh, they now have stick to an inflation target that makes it easier for them to, to be very, very clear about that they will not allow for, for, for yen appreciation. And finally today, I'd like to look at the cable. What are your short, mid and long term predictions for the pound dollar? I mean, cable is obviously difficult. Uh, I, I think that we have seen that we are a little bit topish here and when we, we are at the 160 level, I, I guess, uh, we look for a little bit more downside. And it's also about your dollar story, story a little bit for, for, for the downside here. We, we, we expect uh, Bank of England to remain very soft and not, uh, not move any, or not, not, not put forward any ideas about any different uh, monetary policy. Uh, they are now trying to buy more on the front, uh, front side of the curve and it, uh, they will keep down interest rates uh, clearly and UK economy will also continue to suffer from, from uh, the austerity measures that are yeah, make the consumer suffer. So we have like cable moving a little bit down from here, 155-ish, three to six months. Why do you think the Bank of England will remain soft? I mean, this recovery uh, you have in in the UK will will take some time because I mean, uh, obviously you have to correct your uh, fiscal imbalances both on the on the public side and and also on the on the private side of of the equation. So. That means sluggish growth, I guess, and the uh, Bank of England has been clear about this for some time now, and now I think they also have the inflation coming slowly down, and, and they will not be eager to, to, to move away from, uh, from their soft stance, and that, uh, that I think, uh, will, will uh, hurt the sterling. Obviously, we had some, some surprises here uh, recently on, on, on the activity side, but I, I'm not putting too much... Uh, yeah, I don't think they will be long-lasting or accelerate. Well, thank you, Anders. That's all we've got time for today. But stay right here with Dukascopy TV for all the latest FX news and exclusive interviews.